This is the Soul Filled Sisterhood Podcast, and I'm your host, Nicole Burgess, licensed marriage and family therapist and an empowerment mentor for women. The information shared in this podcast is not a substitute, nor is it to convey professional, psychological, financial, or medical advice. If you could use such services, please seek them out from someone you trust. Now here is today's episode. Episode 23. Today's episode is sponsored by Nicole Burgess, Empowerment Mentor. She is helping women remove their good girl mask in the people-pleasing behavior and let their authentic and powerful self arise. For more information on the good girl meets the spiritually awakened woman, go to NicoleBurgessCoaching.com forward slash good girl workshop. Now here is today's episode. Well, welcome, sisters. In today's episode, I really want to talk about being in midlife and unraveling. And what I mean by unraveling is beginning to challenge old belief systems, let go of illusions, let go of the personas that you have been living under, stop living out of other people's expectations of you, and really truly connecting to that higher power to source. And as I've said in other episodes, for me, that is God. In midlife, I'm really talking about returning to your own inner wisdom, right? Really connecting to your soul. And I know in episode one, that's why I emphasize so much that self-reflection and contemplation to let go of these illusions, to let go of the personas that you may have been hiding behind. You have to know yourself. And that is part of that important work to create the time for yourself so that you can do that. You know, in my Good Girl workshop, I hear a lot of feedback from women that they know that they're not living their life fully because they're hiding behind that mask. They don't show the real them because they're afraid of how other people may react to them showing their authentic self. They are afraid of not speaking up for what they need or want. They're afraid that people won't care what they even think. All of that is living outside of yourself, meaning you're looking for the external validation to say that you are enough. That's, again, one of those false beliefs that we can sometimes hang on to as women. And I think there's there's multiple false beliefs that we can hang on to. And it's it's beginning to release those beliefs in midlife, if not sooner. I would love for adult women to re- continue to teach their daughters to mentor younger women, young adults, uh, adolescent girls, so that we can break this earlier and earlier in life versus waiting until really we're an adult to go, oh, I need to let that go. And so some of those core universal false beliefs are one, like I just said, thinking that you're not enough, that you're not worthy, that you're not lovable, that I can't be my true self or I can't show my true self. All of those are false beliefs, right? And then what we do, and as I said this in episode two, like I've done that, I did it for years when I was in my 20s, right? I was still very worried about or concerned about what other people thought of me. Some of that, you know, is just kind of the developmental stage, but that can really get cemented in if we're not mindful of that. So I was concerned that, oh, I need to live up to other people's expectations. They're telling me this career path would be good for me. Again, coming from a loving place, unfortunately, it wasn't a good fit for me. So that's fairly miserable for a while because I was doing career paths. I was doing jobs that were not in alignment with my core strengths, that were not in alignment for what I wanted to do. And God continued to show me over the years how part of my job is to actually listen to people. So I, again, part of what directed me to be a psychotherapist and now a coach was no matter where I went, I had people coming to me telling me their problems, their life stories, and I wasn't trained. So I finally said, okay, 
I can do this really well. I can empathize with folks and people continue to tell me, man, you're a great listener, which I am, and I enjoy listening to people, yet I needed more skills to be able to hone that in and make a living from it. So I got the training and I moved into that path. That helps, you know, that path, when I started to listen to what worked for me, when I started to listen to the higher voice, right, to God, things started to flow much more easily. It's when we don't look at those shadow parts that come out. It's when we don't look at those personas that we're living behind. That's where that frustration can come from, the reaction piece can come from versus responding, and you you don't feel as much love or joy from your life. I know when when women I work with, part of my job with them is to hold the container for them for wherever they are in their life. And when they tell me that they want to be more of a leader, when they tell me they want to feel more happiness, when they tell me they want to feel more love or go deeper in their relationships, part of that is gaining or tuning into those parts of themselves so that they can bring those more forward. It's letting go of, well, they may not like me if I ask for what I need or want. It's like, And we won't know that unless you do it. It's about taking that inspired action. It truly is being 100% responsible for your life, for your actions that you're doing, for your thoughts that you're having. Whatever Whatever thoughts we are feeding, that's what we're going to create more of in our life. So if I continue to hold on to that thought that, oh, I'm not worthy of having the love of my life. I'm not worthy of having a very financially abundant life. I'm not worthy of having the job that I absolutely love and I won't get paid for it. If I keep feeding that, I'm going to actually create that. And I'm telling, right, the law of the universe or I'm telling God that's like, yeah, don't bring that to me because, yeah, I can't do that. When I stay connected to God or to spirit, that helps guide and direct me in my life. And when I know, okay, here's what I'm here to do. Here's what I want to do. Yes, there's, I'm sure, some risk involved in it getting out of my comfort zone. But I also understand the why behind it. God's going to conspire with me. The law of the universe, right, is it's got my back. So then I have to start to take action to make that happen. So the beautiful part about unraveling, right, is being able to look at those parts of yourself that keep you playing small, that keep you hidden, getting curious with those parts, right? It's not about, we're not trying to get rid of those different parts that have helped us get to where we are in life. It's about getting to know them, understanding them so that you can move forward, so that you can be more connected to your your own inner wisdom. I know shame can be a big blocker in women's life and in men's life as well. And in order for you to move forward, find the trusted friend, talk to a therapist, talk to a coach, talk to a spiritual director. When we put light onto that shame, it cannot continue to grow. You then can really release those thoughts, those parts of you that have just kept you where you are because fear of judgment, fear of being embarrassed, fear of people not liking you. When we address those areas of our life that no longer has power over you, and that can be with any anything, whether it's not knowing your financial situation, not looking at your expenses or your debt, being able to talk about that is a great start so that you can move forward. Remember, you are more than that shame. You are more than that time that happened in the past. That past is is done. It's gone. You can't change it. What you can change is where you're going. I know one thing for me is, is my belief that I need to constantly hustle. I have gotten caught into that trap for years and I, I know this about myself and then I have to keep re-remembering it. 
So I told you back in September, I went on a spiritual workshop. When I, for me, it was a retreat as well. And one thing that came up again was that masculine energy where I need to be very productive. I need to produce. I need to hustle. And part of that workshop helped remind me it's okay to be. It's okay to step more into that feminine energy for that's where my harmony is. That's where my balance is. And I know for many women, especially it seems like more of high achievers or introverts trying to be more extroverts, we can get really wrapped up into this belief, this illusion that we have to behave in a specific way to be successful in order to be seen or to be heard. Yes, you definitely have to take actions. You need to be consistent. You need to uh, persevere. You need to have goals to follow those goals. You need to really pay attention to, again, the the thoughts that you're feeding yourself. All of that is, is true. And you also have to know what your rhythm is and be open to receiving from the universe directions to where to go and how to do it. And so what that can look like is, you know, taking more risk, definitely getting outside of your comfort zone in order to get more of those things that you're wanting in life, whether that's joy, it's peacefulness, it's creating a more successful business, it's being a better parent, whatever that is, you got to take risk. You do have to get outside of your comfort zone. And that's part of the unraveling part of it. When we surrender into that intuition, that connection to God, that connection to source, joy shows up a lot more because you're also feeling more love for yourself. There's that self-compassion that comes up during your meditations, during that self-care practice you now have in place, I hope. (laughs) And whenever, when you are able to do those things for yourself, you get more solid in feeling the love. And when you feel love for yourself, it then begins to truly radiate out that love for others. So when obstacles come up in your life, they don't derail you as easily as they have in the past. When you let go of the illusion like, oh my gosh, this is this. I don't know, whatever obstacle has come up, I can't go forward, I can't do anything, right? That's a false belief, it's a false thought. It just means how can I go around it? How do I move forward? What resources do I need to use? It's looking at it as an opportunity. And I get, you also need to feel the feelings that go with it of frustration, shock, disappointment, sadness, whatever is gonna come up. And keep taking those steps forward. When we surrender, right, it doesn't come without suffering. The suffering means more of, again, letting go of, but I used to know myself as this. I used to be this good girl, right? I needed to be this perfect mom. I need to be this so-called perfect woman, right? Those are all illusions, It's being you. It's being the best possible you that you can be with where you are right now in this moment. And accepting yourself doesn't mean you can't continue to grow and to change, but it's also about self-acceptance. That false self is more ego-driven, right? Now, when we were younger, and let's say you didn't have the healthiest parents, maybe they were workaholics, maybe they were abusive, you were in survival mode, you did what you needed to do to truly survive. And now as this adult woman, those skills you use no longer serve you. Now as this adult woman, you are taking full responsibility for you and no longer blaming or judging those who raised you or those who were in your life. It's more of like, what brings me joy? What lights me up? What gives me energy? And the more you're tapping into this and then surrounding yourself with people who also support you, build you up, not take you down, that helps you go deeper into this unraveling and going more to your true self, your authentic self, listening to that inner wisdom. 
There's a book that I read uh, back in, I think it was August. It's called Falling Upward, A Spirituality for the Two Halves of Life. And it's by Father Richard Rohr. And I loved in his conversation or in his book where he talked quite a bit about, you know, the the first half of life is where we wear the mask, we create the illusions, we have these, we believe these false beliefs that are going on. And in the second half of life, it's really about surrendering those masks. This is where there is suffering because you're doing the releasing, you're doing the letting go, and you're following more of that spiritual path that you want to be on or that you're going towards. Father Richard Rohr talks about in here, he says, quote, that when we're hearing and obeying God, it sounds an awful lot like the voices of risk, of trust, of surrender, of soul, of, quote, common sense, of destiny, of love, of an intimate stranger, of your deepest self, and he says, of the soulful, quote, Beatrice, unquote, that's part of the second half of life. There's so much, I think, excitement in that. There's so much love in that. It's knowing it's like, wow, these are all these things that I can create in my life, that I can have in my life when I really know who I am and I let go of these illusions. So some of you may know that if you've heard some of my previous episodes that one of my goals to doing this podcast, the Soul Food Sisterhood podcast, is to literally reach and inspire women all over our globe. I'm not there yet, and I know one day it will go there. So I have this strong belief that part of my mission on life is to inspire, is to teach, is to coach, and help heal women where they are so they can be more of the leader in their life. I love working with women and bringing out the magic that they have with inside of them, that when they begin to see themselves as this leader in their own life and that they truly matter and that they do impact our world, it has a big ripple effect. So if you're listening to some of these other episodes, I mean, I continue to be inspired by the people that I interview that I know within my own personal life because of all the changes that they're making in our world. Women coming together, again, is one of my, it is one of my core beliefs. I believe that together we are stronger than when we fight one another. Together we can make a bigger impact in our world versus trying to do everything separately. When we support one another, when we empower one another, when we see how we are all unique and that we all offer something to this world, we really begin to change the vibration on our planet. I remember a couple years ago in my previous podcast I was doing, I think it was actually before I did launching your daughter podcast, I had this dream of that I could have a podcast that would reach women globally. Again, the impact that that would make, and it continues to make, I still get feedback on it, which is great. I love that people are finding it helpful and getting great information to help with their, you know, adolescent daughters or girls that they work with. But I spoke with the coach, I was thinking of working with her, and I told her one of my visions was to reach women globally. And her response to me at the time was like, wow, that's a really big goal. And I knew in that moment, the way she had said it, there was a, I got a sense of disbelief from her. And the more that we talked, I knew we were not a good fit. I think she's doing incredible work in the world. And I fully support who she is as a person in the work she does. Just her and I that nope, you can't be my coach if you don't have belief in that power, if you don't have belief in the person that you're going to coach, that it's actually possible. So it is finding those people in your life, whether it's, again, a therapist, a coach, um, a spiritual director, finding those that are going to believe in who you are and can also truly help hold you not just accountable, but help point out the shadow work that needs to be done as well so that you can achieve those things that you're really wanting in your life. So I want to do a little exercise with you. I want to do a little visualization. So if you're out taking a walk, or if you're driving, do this later. But if you're out taking a walk or you're sitting there listening or maybe you're cooking or you're doing something, I want you just to pause for a moment. 
I want you to imagine the woman that you are right now with those illusions that you're holding on to, the false beliefs that you're holding on to. And I want you to imagine that you decide not to make any changes to any of those thoughts, those beliefs, those illusions that are keeping you stuck or unhappy or frustrated. I want you just to to say, this is where I am and I'm choosing to stay here. And I want you to now travel in time one year ahead. I want you to see the woman where you are a year from now without making any changes, where you continue to hold yourself back from sharing your needs and your wants, where you continue to not be more of your authentic self, where you continue to wear that mask, where you are still parenting the way you've been parenting, where you've been showing up as that manager that you were a year ago. Now, go ahead five years down the road that you, again, not making any changes in your life. You're staying right where you have been. Where in your body do you feel those emotions? What is even coming up for you? How do you actually feel about not making any changes in your life? My guess is you're feeling still unsatisfied, frustrated, thinking that you're unlovable, that you're not enough. It doesn't feel so good. Now I want you just to take a deep breath. Come back into the present moment. Just feel your body. If you're sitting, just feel your body connected to the chair that you're sitting on, the couch that you're sitting on. If you have been walking, that your feet are on the ground, right? Come back into your body. Come back into the present moment. Now, I want you to envision the woman that you want to be, the mom that you want to be, the manager that you want to be the wife that you want to be, the partner that you want to be. I want you to see how you have begun to unravel, that you have begun to accept more of who you are, that you're beginning to release these false beliefs, that you're taking steps to share more of your true self with others, that you're taking those steps to go deeper into your spiritual practice. And now let's fast forward from a year from now. Do you see how you are more joyful? Do you see that you feel more love for yourself and others? That you're able to find more beauty in the world? That there's more gratitude in your life? Because you've let go of all the things that have been holding you back or you're practicing letting more and more of that go. Now, let's fast forward five years from now. You see your relationships are deeper. You're more connected. You have become a better parent because you're role modeling this to your daughter and to your son. That those that you mentor as a manager, you're helping them become the leaders of their own life. That when there is an event that creates a strong reaction in you, you get curious and explore that and begin to change and so you can respond and learn from it, that you know you are lovable. You know in your core you are enough. You know that you have a mission here on the planet, that your vibration level has risen so much because you are taking the steps that you need to take to be more of you. Can you feel it? Now let's travel back to the present moment. Stay connected to that future self, but just feel your body where you are right now. And then slowly open your eyes. Take a deep breath. All right. Now, what are those emotions that you're feeling? Jot that down. Jot the image down. Write it down. What it is that you just created in your mind about the woman that you want to become that you saw yourself five years from where you are today? Where in your body did you feel that? Write that down. I want you just to imagine that possibility that you are capable of making those changes. It is 
possible to create the life that you want, which all starts with you coming back to you. If you don't want to have a coach or a therapist at this point in time, go out and read some of these self-help books that we've talked about in previous episodes, and I'm going to list more um, within the show notes here today, like The Falling, Up- Falling Upward with by Richard Rohr and some other ones. And if you're ready to do that step with fine-tuning your skills, with returning back to yourself and you're needing that coach, go out to NicoleBurgessCoaching.com forward slash inner truth and schedule your discovery call today. I hope you found this helpful and thank you so much for listening. If today's episode resonated with you and you are ready to make transformational changes in your life to reclaim your power, your truth, and live with more ease, I invite you to schedule a 30-minute discovery call with me. Go to NicoleBurgessCoaching.com forward slash inner truth.